Welcome to the Gadget 360 show with me, Rajiv Makhni, and we've got a really, really interesting show for you. We'll start off with something we don't usually cover. We have the Mercedes C-Class. I'll give you our first impressions, the newest C-Class in the lineup. It's called the Baby S, but we're going to mainly talk about one thing, the tech inside the car. Then we're moving on to the MSI G76 Reader 2022, with the most powerful internals possible on a laptop. Huge 17-inch screen. It's built like a tank, and we really enjoyed using this. Then the Sony HD A7000 soundbar, nice powerful soundbar from Sony, uses 11 custom designed drivers to create immersive Dolby Atmos audio. All right, it's here, the BBS Mercedes C-Class, our first impression. Gorang and Ravina took the new C-Class C300D for a spin to experience all the tech inside. Now this really is chock-a-block. It's not just the infotainment system, we'll show you that also. It has so many amazing other things also. It's like the S-Class and all its features have come to the C-Class. It has a 12.3 inch LCD driver display, 11.9 inch display in the middle for controlling the entire car. The software on the car is also quite amazing. MBUX, it has, you know, every profile can be configured to every driver who drives the car. The car will remember all their preferences from their seating, their preferred sunroof position, how they like their audio, every single thing. The really cool part, the car is coming to us and it will be with us for quite a while. We're going to take a second look at this car in detail very soon. Right now, Gorang Rubina, it's all yours. It's a rare sight that we are bringing you today. All the Mercedes C-Class models ever produced, starting with the one that launched in 1982. Here we are for the launch of the next generation of C-Class. We have three new variants from Mercedes for C-Class and now we will take a look at the C300D, which is also called the Baby S. I'm Rubina Mongya and I'm Gorang Garuda and today as you can see we have with us the Mercedes C-Class C300D and we are going to talk all things tech inside this car right Gorang? So yes we are going to talk about everything that is the infotainment system the audio and every tech feature that you get inside the car also the MBUX right yeah that's a whole new innovation and we're going to get into all of that so let's sit in the, inside the car, Gorang. You might want to unlock it with your phone first. Yes, of course. As soon as one gets inside the car, the first thing felt immediately is how great the C200D looks on the inside. It appears like a great mix of style the legacy car maker has perfected with the technology that Mercedes is trying to incorporate. So what you see are two big screens fitting in well with the leather and metal enveloped interiors of the car. The main screen is a massive 11.9 inch LCD. It gets plenty sharp and is easily visible to the driver due to the brightness and how it tilts towards the driver by 6 inches. It sure is premium as it is borrowed directly from the S-Class. The second screen lies behind the steering wheel with the speedometer and everything else that the driver needs to see. The steering wheel itself is flat at the bottom and has knobs and buttons to control everything in the car. So I've been really excited to test all the tech inside this car and it starts the minute you sit. First you need to configure your profile, your seating position, your steering position, your ambient lighting, anything that you want and each time you enter this car, all you have to do is select your profile and the car remembers it. Plus, you can customize it now for other people as well. So, as soon as the user sits inside the car and scans their fingerprint on the reader located right beneath the screen, their profile gets activated. The seats automatically get in their preferred and configured position and the sunroof opens just as much as the user would have it. The other big feature that you will see in this car and the other two cars from Mercedes which is the S-Class and the Maybach is the car 2X. What it actually does is you have one Mercedes car talking to another and whatever information and data that they collect, they send it to a cloud owned by Mercedes. While Google Maps have a lot of data, Car2X feature will take a while because there are only so many Mercedes cars on the road. It will have impact in the future. We just have to wait and see for that. Another tech-related part of this profile system is the Barmister audio system inside the car, exclusive to the C300D. Another great part of the MBUX and the profile system on this car is the fact that how every user can configure the audio according to what 
they require and what they like. The Barmister speakers can be configured in such a way that the audio that comes out of these speakers is according to that specific user that is using the car at that moment. The treble can be altered, the mids can be altered, the bass response can be altered, where the source of the audio primarily is can be altered. Everything is configurable to that specific user. But yes, this entire Burmester audio system that is limited to just the C300D. The other two variants of the C-Class do not get that. The initial setup of the audio involves altering the volume, intensity and the balance amongst the treble, bass and mids of the music being listened to. Then comes the 3D audio setup which selects how wide and how high the audio goes around the car, along with deciding the position of the primary audio source. The sonic performance of the audio system regardless of the preset remains excellent. The mids are incredibly detailed, the treble is sharp and comfortable at the same time. The bass is layered and deep with the low end details being rumbly and satisfying. The 3D audio preset also works well with songs that depend on bass heavy frequencies, so we would not call it a gimmick. Controlling or configuring anything on the car requires the user to deal with the MBUX7, which is rather easy. The menu systems are simple to understand, the buttons are big and easy to find, but the motion and animation do not seem to be as smooth as we would find on our smartphones. The UI elements seem to be taken straight from 2000 based UX designs, but that is just something we've come to expect from legacy car makers. But that is the only part where the catch up is felt, because everything else seems to be working so well when it comes to tech. If that was not felt so far, smartphone integration is where you might feel that. While it does the simple integration of the smartphone into the car through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay available, it goes the other way around too. The car can be integrated into the smartphone through the Mercedes Me app. This app can be used to unlock the car, check statistics for the engine, brakes, tire pressure, mileage and trip data and can even be used to check for the service log. After driving down the mountains and testing out all the tech in this car, I have to say that I really liked how perfectly it adjusted to my height. And then of course the infotainment system and the car 2x feature like one of my favorite standing out features was the car 2x what about you garan so i love the mbux i love the infotainment system and just how well the bum is the speakers work and the whole profile system is my favorite thing hands down of this car the new c-class in unlimited time with it seemed to be living up to its baby s moniker but also exceeded it at times with the great things it does from the perspective of tech so, in the end, the experience was not only elevated by mountain roads beneath us, but also all of the technology that surrounded us inside the new C-Class. And now, after that car, we've got the laptop of all laptops, the MSI GE76 Raider 2022. This is huge, 17-inch display built like an absolute tank, intimidating to look at. And at this present moment, this is one of the best we've tried. Built with metal all around, great keyboard, the number pad besides it is fantastic. Surprisingly small trackpad, but the 17-inch display is beautiful. Great colors and the speakers, nice, powerful, loud speakers, plenty of ports also. and the best possible specs one can get on a laptop. Best CPU, GPU on any laptop. Price tag, guess, guess, guess. 4,24,940, but we think it's worth it. This one is right at the apex. This is the most ridiculous laptop to show up in front of us in recent weeks. All because it goes bonkers in every aspect. This is the MSI GE76 Raider. A huge 17-inch laptop with the best possible specifications one can find on any laptop. And the ridiculousness of the power shows up everywhere. It is a monstrosity and the laptop not only knows it, but also embraces it. And you will find out how in the next few minutes. This is a literal tank of a laptop. It is much larger than most of the laptops we have been reviewing. It is entirely covered in metal. It is an inch in thickness and weighs a little over 3 kilograms. So it won't fit in most backpacks and when it does, you will feel the weight. But given the power it packs is in a way equal to a tower PC, that is fair. And the thick chassis also means better heat management for sustained performance. The front edge of the keyboard is entirely covered with an RGB light bar which throbs with animations. 
and such a huge size also results in a full size keyboard with a number pad. The keyboard is an extremely comfortable one with plenty of travel and subtle shades of RGB going across all the keys. The trackpad under it though is an entirely different story. It is smooth in the operation and precise with its mechanics but the size is almost too small for the sheer size of everything on the laptop. But where no stones were left unturned are the ports as there are so many. One USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, one RJ45 Ethernet port, one SD card reader, one HDMI 2.1 port and one mini display port. Basically everything you might need at any point. Time to talk about the second biggest reason for the size of the chassis. The Mammoth Display The unit we got had a 17.3 inch full HD display with a 360Hz refresh rate. It gets bright enough and the colors are vivid and beautiful. But with the 360Hz refresh rate, gaming gets extremely smooth with the user having barely any limit to the number of FPS they can get on any game. But apart from gaming, watching content works out well. If you are looking for a better resolution, you will have to go for the more expensive variant. An inch of thickness of this laptop is for a very important reason. It helps in keeping up the sufficient airflow needed to manage the heat generated by the ridiculous internals of this laptop. Our GE76 radar came with the 12th gen Intel Core i7 12900HK, 32GB of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. This is an absolute monster of a laptop. Average tasks are nothing for it. 4K video editing is an absolute treat on this laptop. Any sort of creative work is made easy by Intel's incredible processor. And when it comes to gaming, the 3080 Ti performs well. At 1080p, getting more than 80 to 90 frames per second was an easy task at maxed out presets for all games. Everything looked great on the display without any stutters or slowdowns anywhere. The fans had to kick up to full speed with such performance. But still, anywhere where the hands were placed, heat could be felt only slightly. With these internals, where any laptop will suffer is battery life. And the GE76 does suffer. With average usage, the laptop will last for about 5 hours. If gaming or any task which needs sustained performance is involved, 5 hours is cut down to 1 to 1.5 hours at most. Even so, not many people looking at this laptop are concerned with portability or battery life, hence such performance with the battery is fair. And that's how the MSI GE76 Raider owns up to its monstrosity. It embraces it in every aspect and makes sure that the user looking for it knows what they are getting into. Be it the design, the internals, the display, the performance and the experience. And if that does not do it, look no further than the price. The Raider starts at a price of 4,29,940 rupees. And for the ones looking for the absolute top of the line, this behemoth of a laptop will be well worth it. Let's take a quick break right now and we come back, lots more happening. Next up is the soundbar by Sony, the Sony HT-A7000. Now this has got a simple design but powerful sonic performance. Default sound level is very neutral, sprinkles of a punchy bass, further detailed by the very, very good soundbar subwoofer that they've given. Most audio contact sounds great on the soundbar and the audio can be calibrated by the soundbar as per the shape and size of the room for ideal Dolby Atmos performance. As for watching movies, the soundbar together with the subwoofer can produce excellent sound, deep rumbly bass to make the movie experience absolutely amazing. While a product having different variants with different things added to or removed from each variant is a common practice amongst most tech products, this one ends up being a little too complicated. This is the Sony HT-A7000 soundbar. It comes in five different variants. And in our review, we're going to tell you if this soundbar is worth buying and which variant you should get or which variant you should skip. The 
one thing that remains unchanged in all of the variants is the soundbar and its simple and basic design. A mesh grille covers all of the front firing drivers and tweeters, a fabric grille covers the upward firing drivers and there are base posts on either end for the built-in woofers. It is 130cm in width and looks good with TVs measuring at least 65 inches. Other TVs will be dwarfed. And the flaw with the basic design is its glossiness. The entire top, barring the fabric grille, is a glossy shade of black which reflects the visuals on the TV screen above it. It is pretty distracting in low light. The solution though is in the box, which are wall marks. But still, it would not have been necessary if this surface had a matte finish rather than glossy. On the right side of the soundbar are some buttons for performing basic controls and on the right side of the front is a small screen. This screen displays the common information like the source of audio, volume and audio format. On the back are some very capable ports. Apart from the regular power port, optical input port, 3.5mm audio jack and the USB-A port are three HDMI ports. Two HDMI in ports and one HDMI e out ports with all of them being HDMI 2.1 connectors. So, they support pass-through of 8K content at 60Hz and 4K content at 120Hz in HDR10 and Dolby Vision formats. There is another S-Center port through which a Bravia TV when connected can be used as a part of the audio system. As for the connections which do not require ports, Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi connectivity are supported with Chromecast and AirPlay 2 capabilities. The inside of the soundbar inhabits two overhead up-firing speakers, two beam tweeters, five front-firing speakers and two built-in woofers built to provide seven-channel audio experience. The soundbar takes the help of the sound reflection of the walls in the room in an attempt to create a 360-degree audio experience for the user enabled by the mics on the soundbar. The mics calibrate the sound by measuring the dimensions of the room. But even so, when it is just the device itself, the 360-degree soundscape is where it struggles the most. While all of the sound processing focuses on increasing the surround sound, it only works out well for the left and right channels. The volume is lagging and even so, the soundscape set is dense, detailed and rumbling. And even though the top firing drivers fulfill the channels needed at the top of the soundscape, the Dolby Atmos performance suffers as there are no rear channels. Hence, that is where the rear channel speakers come in. And even the built-in woofers are great with the 500 watt amplification behind them, they can't still come close to replacing the incredibly detailed rumbly bass of the dedicated subwoofer, the SASW5 in this case. With the rear channel speakers and the subwoofer, it feels like a dimension has been added to every aspect and frequency of the sound. The hole in the soundscape behind the user is wiped out. The bass gets further separated from the dialogues and vocals. When the dialogues are enhanced further by the sound processing, the experience of watching content is made even better. So the soundbar by itself can leave you desiring for more, especially when it comes in at a price of 1,49,990. Even with all the features and capabilities, it suffers. Hence, that is the variant to skip. Our suggestion? Buy either variant with the subwoofer and rear channel speakers to get the ideal Dolby Atmos experience. The variant with the subwoofer and two rear channels starts at an introductory price of 1,65,970. Hence, in the limited time that this price is available, we would suggest you to get it. That then is the Gadget 360 show for this week. I do have to tell you, we've got some great stuff coming in next week. Do tune in.